There are literally hundreds of versions of Monopoly, including one that pokes fun at the hours it takes to finish the game. And dare we say, tempts us to devote the rest of our lives to beating it? More than 85 years after its invention, Monopoly is one of the most popular board games ever. Ask industry observers and fans why the game has thrived, and they'll throw credit to its storyline and nostalgia. So how did it corner the board game market? And what made it possible to transform Monopoly from this to this? While estimates range from 300 to 7,000, it's nearly impossible to know how many versions of Monopoly exist today. But to understand how we got here, we have to go back 100-ish years to when Monopoly was first known as the Landlord's Game. In her book, The Monopolists, Mary Pallon writes that the original game was patented by an activist named Lizzie McGee in 1904. Then enter Charles Darrow who, like many others, made his own version of the game. In 1933, he acquired a patent for Monopoly and sold the game to Parker Brothers two years later. That same year, Parker Brothers bought McGee's original patent for $500, securing all rights to the game and crediting Darrow as the sole inventor. It was worth it. In its first two years, Monopoly sold over 2 million copies and averaged 1 million annual sales over the next 30 years. Fast forward to 1991. The toy and gaming company Hasbro acquired Parker Brothers, which gave Hasbro its own near monopoly of the board game market. By the late 90s, Hasbro controlled about 85% of the board game market, with games like Twister, Candyland, and Scrabble. Because of its dominance, Hasbro could double down on its flagship brand rather than experiment with new games. Why? Well, extending a brand is less costly. From 1995 to 2005, Hasbro made some 230 official offshoots of Monopoly. And today, you can play the Monopoly card game, computer game, and iPhone game, which is unsurprisingly number one in Apple's board game category. What Hasbro wasn't expecting was this chart, which shows the rise of cooperative games. Recognize Settlers of Catan? Since its release in 1995, Catan has sold 40 million units in over 50 languages. In 2009, Wired called it the Monopoly Killer and credited one German genius for engineering a faster, smarter board game. The trend was changing. Over the last 50 years, the number of cooperative games has grown from less than 1,200 to nearly 5,000 games in 2015. Today, Asmodee, the French game company behind Catan, has carved its share of the market by prioritizing cooperative play. From 2014 to 2018, the private equity-backed company made 20 acquisitions, purchasing smaller board game companies like Fantasy Flight Games and Mayfair Games, making them a dominant player like Hasbro. In 2022, Asmodee was sold for $3 billion to another private equity firm. There is no denying Asmodee's stake in the market, but could its new owner decide to acquire Hasbro and truly take over? Or will the king of board games stand its ground? What makes Hasbro unique is that it's invested in growth beyond toys and games. In 2019, it bought Entertainment One, allowing it to use movie, TV, and music production to capitalize on its IP. That same year, it announced the production of a Monopoly movie, starring Kevin Hart and set to release in 2027. But in 2022, Hasbro decided to sell E1, realizing it was more cost-effective to outsource content creation. If the Marvel franchise is any indication, movie production will likely be another lucrative move for Monopoly, which is fitting for a game that's all about collecting cash. Want more? Roll the dice on our next video. And check out the links below to sign up for our daily newsletter, which keeps you up to date on the latest news in business and tech.